Hi everyone, welcome to Things Lucy Reads. I'm Luce and this is a Tolkien book book haul. So it's been at least six months since I last filmed something and I was planning as I start this channel up again to do a catch up because I still have some videos from 2016 that I haven't edited and then I was going to do the ones from 2017 as well but I think that I'm actually going to not upload any of the videos from 2017 and just make a few new ones. I didn't really plan to take a YouTube break, it just happened and I kind of made some attempts at catching up again but those fizzled out after a little while and I just thought I'm just gonna let it go and take the break and enjoy it and then come back this year all fresh. So that's what I'm going to do. As I said these are all Tolkien related books that I got last year. Um, if you have forgotten amidst all of the Star Wars that I'm actually a huge Tolkien nerd this is your reminder. Uh, the first book that I got related to Tolkien last year was a Dot to Dot of Tolkien, 45 Iconic Characters and Scenes from the Undying Lands and Beyond. This is an adult Dot to Dot book. I haven't done any of them yet so I can't show you but um, probably as I do them there will be pictures on my Instagram which will be linked below if you would like to go and follow me on there. The next Tolkien book that I got is um, Baron and Luthien. Which me owning this is kind of hilarious because quite honestly I think that Baron and Luthien are overrated but um, I'm not gonna pass up a um, Tolkien book and if I can read things from the Silmarillion without actually reading the Silmarillion I'm gonna do it so yeah it was it was inevitable that I would get this I'm hoping to get to it fairly soon let's be real I'm probably gonna read this before I actually read Lord of the Rings um, the next book that I have to show you was actually a really nice book mooch find I just kind of was on there and um, I came across this, which is The Battles of Tolkien by David Day. So I... Flexi bound, no damage. Anyway, um, it arrived in really nice condition and it's absolutely gorgeous inside. It's got all of these really beautiful illustrations and it's just an overview of all of the battles that appear in all of the um, Legendarium from the Battles of the Ages of the Valar, to the War of Wrath, to the War of the Ring, and yeah, it's probably just going to help me to understand those a little bit better, and even if it doesn't, I'm definitely going to enjoy looking at the pictures. The next book is not strictly a Tolkien book, but the series is um, like related to Tolkien itself. The book is The Saga of the Volsungs, The Legend of Sigurd the Dragonslayer and the Magic Ring of Power. This is a part of a series of books that were inspirations to Tolkien for The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and this one is related to Sigurd and Gudrun, so I thought it would be a good idea to be able to read both of those um, kind of consecutively and get a better picture of the story. The next one I'm going to show you is something that I bought for myself for my birthday um, and it is the Folio Society edition of the Silmarillion. Okay so I have this thing where I like my Tolkien books to look like they've just come off the shelves of the library in Rivendell and this one is probably a little bit too fancy. I don't know if they would have gold foil on the covers um, in Middle Earth but whatever I'm gonna go with it. I haven't read the Silmarillion yet but now I have two copies so it's probably gonna happen soon hopefully. And the next book I also bought myself for my birthday last year. It is a large format hardcover of The Hobbit, illustrated by Alan Lee. It has a really nice naked cover with just a smug in gold here. Um, it's a really lovely forest green. I don't know if that's coming up much on the video. Um, and then obviously it has full page illustrations by Alan Lee. I got this because I do have a copy of this illustrated by Alan Lee in paperback which my parents gave me for Christmas or my birthday one year. But my dad read it and I am one of those people that does not like the spines of the books to be cracked. My dad is one of those people who thinks it doesn't matter and he read my copy of The Hobbit and uh, cracked the spine so that now it sits like this. So I bought myself this much nicer, uncrackable copy of The Hobbit but even if he wants to read it again, he's not getting his hands on either of these. He can go and find his own copy because no. The next book is the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy colouring book. I have at this point about 10 adult colouring books and I rarely actually colour in them, but whatever. Um, so this one has pictures from the films to colour in. One day I'll get back into adult colouring and I will have this ready for when that happens. 
The next book is one that I've wanted for years and years and years and I finally caved and bought myself for Christmas, except I got this in like September. It's The Lord of the Rings Sketchbook by Alan Lee. Alan Lee is one of my favourite artists of all time and I really love that he does illustrations for um, The Lord of the Rings because I think they just fit so well. <laughs> There's a picture that my best friend drew for me that I forgot I put in here. Yeah, so this is just um, sketches that he drew for The Lord of the Rings, both the, the books and the films, I think. He did a lot of the concept art. Yeah, so I'm just really excited to look at some more of his art, basically. And then following the theme of books that look like they've come out of Rivendell, I also bought myself the first omnibus edition of The History of Middle-earth. This one contains the both parts of the Book of Lost Tales, The Lays of Beleriand, The Shaping of Middle-earth, and The Lost Road and other writings. It's really nice, it's just a plain black hardcover, but I like it. And it's honestly cheaper just to buy the omnibuses than it is to buy every single edition in paperback. This has been kind of like on my ultimate book goals wish list since I was 14 and I found out that it existed but they're like $90 each and I never thought that I would be able to afford it until there was one week where I worked a lot of hours at work and I paid off all my bills and still had this exorbitant amount of money left over and I was like fuck it I'm gonna go and buy myself this so I did so yeah one day I will read all of this one day and then the next book that I bought myself in the same order for the same reason is A Gateway to Sindarin by David Sarlo. And this one also has a lot more of the um, the grammar stuff, which is actually a little intimidating. I was flicking through it and I'm like, I don't even know this shit in English and it's the only language I speak. But at least if I ever sit down and decide to learn it for real, I'm going to be well covered. Um, David Sarlo is like the foremost expert on the Elvish language. He consulted on the films a lot so that they could get the Elvish exactly right. Um, although I'm still salty that they translated wine as Mirovor, but anyway, probably before I die at some point, this will also get read. And then the next book that I have, and it's also the third last one, is... Fuck, I have no idea how to pronounce this. The Lay of Outro and Itrun by Tolkien, obviously. Um, edited by Valen Flieger, who also did the story of Kalervo, and her commentaries were the best part of that book. So... There was no way that I wasn't going to pick this up. I read this recently and I gave it four out of five stars. It was pretty good. I just found that the poem itself to be a little less compelling than um, the Calervo translation. Nothing wrong with it. And unlike literally everything else, this one's actually finished. But yeah, it just didn't really, it just didn't really grab me. And if it had been unfinished, I wouldn't have been as sad about it as I am about the story of Calervo. So yeah, but it was good. Definitely worth reading. The next book that I have is Tolkien's World by Gareth Hanrahan and Peter McKinstry. This is an unofficial guide to the peoples and places of Middle-earth. It, it still managed to teach me something, even though it's fairly basic. Um, anyway, it was good. I think I gave it four out of five stars. I've already read it. It was pretty short. And um, yeah, definitely worth picking up if you want like a guide that's comprehensive but not too advanced or long. And the last book that I have to show you is one that's also been on my like ultimate book wish list. I bought this for myself literally for Christmas and it is The Art of the Lord of the Rings by Tolkien edited by Wayne G. Hammond and Christina Skull. This is all of the artwork that Tolkien himself did for The Lord of the Rings. I thought it would be interesting just to see his perspective on how things looked. Here's one of my favourite pictures of all time. It's his illustration of Rivendell. Whoa. Okay. I just love it. And I love his style, like the way that he draws things. I just think it looks really cool. So, yeah. Hopefully sometime this year I will be able to read this in full as well. And, uh, yeah. But those are all of the Tolkien books that I got last year. Um, I was thinking this morning that I might do a Tolkien shelf tour if anyone was interested in that, just because I have a lot of little cool things on there. Let me know in a comment if you want to see that or if you've read any of these books and would like to tell me what you thought and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.